For about a thousand years, llamas have been raised domestically by the Andean people of South America. And it took that long for man to discover what the llama was really good for, carrying his golf clubs. For a hundred bucks and all the grass he can eat, one of these two llamas at Talamore Golf Club in Pinehurst, North Carolina, can be your beast of burden. And you go out and you just take your time, and you can concentrate on golf if you're not worrying about golf carts or where you win or did I leave a club. You actually have a caddy. The caddy in tow means that you don't have the worries of the golfer. You just have the concerns of playing the game. All well and good, but before teaming up with a four-legged caddy, you might consider the advantages and disadvantages. So let's compare the human caddy and his Bolivian counterpart. The average caddy can run as tall as six feet or more. The llama is four feet long and four feet tall at the shoulders. In other words, square. A human charges between 30 and 50 bucks plus tip. As we mentioned, a llama, whether he knows it or not, is considerably more expensive. The cost is offset by the fact that llama caddies carry two bags at a time. Just try getting a human to do that. Human caddies vary in their degrees of attractiveness. Llamas, well, listen to this description from the encyclopedia. The llama's head is small with a pointed snout, large ears, and bulging eyes. Sounds like my high school yearbook picture. Once in action, a golfer and his man caddy go it alone. A llama requires an entourage large enough to populate a small third world country. A good man caddy can be the source of advice and encouragement. Yeah, 58 over the bunker. That's it from the bunker to the flag. About 60 feet. 60 feet? Yeah. Llamas know when to keep their mouths shut. OK, we got 58 to the bunker. What do you think it is from the bunker to the flag? Billy? Billy, help me out here. Mm. In English. Yeah, we'll be there in a second. Human caddies are familiar with the subtle intricacies of the game. <laughs> a llama caddy wouldn't know the difference if you used a driver in this spot. On the other hand, with a human caddy, the thrill of a long putt is cause for celebration. Yes! Llama caddies don't speak English. Yes! All right! Give me five, Billy. Give me five. I can give you two. Give me two. Give me two. Give me two. Give me two. Human caddies, as a rule, no golf etiquette. Llama caddies, as a rule, don't. Uh, hey, you want to keep those caddies quiet? Hey, what, like I speak llama or something? I, I can't do anything. Sorry. There are other advantages. Steep hills present no particular burden on your beast, unless he's a human. And a really bad lie might have you and your human caddy beating the bushes while your opponent's llama simply does what comes naturally. For rest and relaxation off the course, a human caddy may spend time reading the trades. Same with a llama caddy. And after a long day of lying about how good your game is, your human caddy will more than likely expect a tip. Here, Chris, here's $5 for your trouble. Thanks for your help. Chances are a miserly tip won't get a llama's goat. Billy, thanks for your help. And for all your efforts, here's a cool, crisp $20 bill. But who knows what they're really thinking. What do you take me for, a cud-chewing member of the camel family, indigenous to the higher altitudes of South America? Why am I going after a bucket of food right now? I hate Finally, from a llama's point of reference, consider how they've been used in other parts of the world. The meat is eaten, the hide is tanned for sandals, the hair is braided to make rope. In the past, they were sacrificed in religious rituals by the hundreds. All things considered, it makes 18 holes of golf with a well-heeled duffer a pretty nice way to make a living. Uh.